Welcome back, everyone, as we continue my first time in the Confederate career in Grand Tactician the Civil War, the Whiskey and Lemons DLC. I've actually got a tiny little bit of whiskey here. Some uh, This is, oh, I forget what brand it is, but it's, it's apple whiskey, and it's fantastic. Mm. So good. But um, we're waiting on a new division, new brigade. I keep forgetting I am a division. A uh, new brigade to come in uh, in the next couple of weeks. And it is now the spring campaign season. I've got a nice amount of money right now, which I can turn around and use for prestige if I haven't already. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look for just a second at my actions. I can't remember at the end of the last episode if I went ahead and threw the party. So you, for 200 yeah, I did. So we're waiting for that, and then I could do it again as soon as that one completes. So that's going to gain me... Uh, 250 prestige and then we'll do it again and get another 250 prestige uh, so it's kind of a game we can play where we spend money to get prestige and then we spend prestige to get money uh, and it allows us to build up our army which right now numbers about 7400 but will number 10,000 once our new brigade is in position it's the spring campaign season I don't know where we're going to be ordered to go but I kind of have my eyes set on Frederick Maryland if we get the opportunity it is March 29th, and we have completed our action for Prestige. Now we're going to go in and do it again. We're going to throw a party one more time. Um, we actually have the ability to do some other things, too. Uh, at some point, I might spend some additional money. Uh, so, for example, Infantry Specialist uh, increases the experience of infantry units under your command and your fame by 10, which would be half a star. I don't care about the fame so much. But the experience would kind of be nice. Uh, but it would cost 500 prestige to do that. And I just don't have that right now. Uh, that is money that I would much rather be spending. Oh, we've been ordered. Let's, uh, let's pause for just a second here. Uh, we have been ordered to Alexandria, right outside of Washington, where there's a pretty substantial Union army. Uh, there's at least one division of 10,000 men there, and I don't know who else might be nearby that could reinforce. So I'm a little nervous about that idea, but obviously we need to obey orders. Uh, so the first thing I want to do, though, is I want to go in and take a look real quick and see how close we are. Okay, we do have uh, our new brigade has arrived. I want to see what units don't yet have decent weapons and we're going to go ahead and upgrade those before I add more units. I want to make sure everybody at least has something other than mixed muskets. So, of course that's going to take everything I had left. So we're still going to have some units that don't have good weapons yet but at least every brigade now has at least one regiment with Lauren's rifles. So we're getting there. So we started making our move toward Alexandria, and it looks like some other units got there first. They're engaging. We are going to arrive in 29 hours. Uh, and by the time everybody arrives, there's going to be a substantial force there that's going to outnumber the Union better than 2 to 1. But Union's going to have the advantage until those other units start arriving. Looks like uh, Millage Bonham is the commanding officer, and we're going up against Irvin McDowell. Battle of Alexandria, April 1st, 1862. We are at the tail end of this long column that's moving toward the enemy who holds all the objectives. I haven't been given any orders yet uh, as far as where we're supposed to go, so I've gone ahead and just given my, my army orders to, to move into position behind this creek here. Looks like we do have some cavalry from one of the other units that's moving up and is going to get a first glimpse of where the enemy is, and he appears to be dug in. Uh, so, obviously, we're going to get some orders at some point, but it's early in the morning, and I am thinking I'd very much like to just go ahead and move my army into position right up here. Now, granted, we've got a lot of other forces around us, too, to deal with and fight around, but that'll at least get me in position where I can fight. And just like that, the wise Union Army has chosen to withdraw without a shot being fired. Now, that makes sense strategically, but it's disappointing for us because I was really hoping to gain some prestige from a battle where we outnumbered the enemy 2-1. to one. Back to the drawing board. 
Looks like already in April of 1862, Lincoln has issued the Emancipation Proclamation, so they are wasting no time. Uh, we've been given orders to move to a place that's pretty much where we already are, so we'll just go ahead and move just a hair up here to where the Army of the Peninsula is. We're just outside of Alexandria and uh, got a decent amount of money, waiting on more prestige to be earned. And here comes another battle. Similar number, so I'm guessing he may just withdraw again. We'll wait and see what happens. So we marched into position near the Union. Uh, the day ended, and so now we're on to the next day. And we're in a position where we have an opportunity now to deploy to face the enemy. And I've got a fence right here that I'm going to take advantage of. I'm going to hold my mixed musket units back as reserves and put our more seasoned troops kind of on the front lines. Not our seasoned troops, but our more our better equipped troops on the front. So anybody that's got decent weapons, we're going to throw up first and let them be the first to contact the enemy. Okay, so it looks like the Union also redeployed, and he re redeployed on our left. So that means everything I just did kind of goes for naught because we're going to need to pull back our left flank to deal with the enemy's new position and then peel around with our right flank as well. So we'll start doing that. I also have skirmishers out, so let's go ahead and start. We'll peel back the left as soon as they're in position. We'll start wheeling forward with the right. So while we're in the process of redeploying our forces, the 23rd Georgia has made contact with an element of Yankee cavalry that has moved into our position. Some of my skirmishers are also engaging them from either flank, so they're kind of out there by themselves, but there is infantry on the way. So I'm trying to get my units into position, as well as some artillery. Let's bring up the reserves to get them where they can be useful when the time comes. All right, we've already gained 559 prestige, most of it just from reaching our combat zones that we've been ordered to. So that's a fair bit just for doing that. I'm going to send the second Texas out here on my right flank. I don't like what I'm seeing from the enemy there. I wish Magruder would come up and help us out. It would take me 170 prestige to take over the Army of the Peninsula. Honestly, that's not bad, considering I've gained more than that just from doing my job so far. So let's go ahead and give him... Turn it. All right, I guess let's just order the brigade forward. I just need them to protect my right flank while I get the rest of these guys into position. All right, we smashed the 6th Massachusetts Cavalry. I need the 7th Maryland up on the line. And I need to push these guys forward to get out on the edge of these trees so that we're firing into open ground as the enemy approaches. Right now it's our skirmishers that are engaging, which is fine, but there are some units are, that are coming in this direction. Thankfully he's, he's attacking me in such a way that we're only going to get pieces of him at a time, which is exactly what we want to see. Breckenridge's battery is already engaging the Union attack that's unfolding on my right which hopefully is buying time for us to get Magruder's units up into position. Let our skirmishers keep doing their job. Drove back another unit. Now the main attack's going to start coming toward us. Whitfield to back up a little bit so he's not on the front line so close. I do have a bit of a gap right here that I, I'm not crazy about, so I'm going to move some help up into that position. All right, our skirmishers are coming back in. We're going to have a major Union attack about to unfold here. 
I'm going to bring 5th Maryland up and get them in a position where they can receive the enemy and maybe fire on his flank. We should get some decent prestige from this battle, and I'm hoping it's going to be in a victory. All right, I'm keeping an eye on what's going on over here. Looks like the Yankees aren't going to test us too much. Only 152 men in the 3rd Virginia Cavalry, or else I would send them forward to deal with these guns, which I might do anyway. I might go ahead and just send Hill's Brigade forward just to engage the enemy there. Okay, let's see what's happening. 35th West, Western Virginia is doing well so far. We've got nice avenues for fire here where we're able to fire on multiple units at one time, which is exactly what we want to see happening. Having these Lawrence rifles is making such a difference because now we've got range. At the very least, we've got a quality of range with the enemy. So we're no longer at a disadvantage where he can fire on us from a place where we can't fire on him. 3rd Virginia Cavalry's commander has been wounded. That's this unit that only had 150 men that was up front. So I'm going to charge these guns over there. I feel really good about our position here with my main army. We've got a decent amount of artillery now, which I think helps a lot. And like I said, the range, big deal. I do need to get better weapons for our cavalry eventually. They weren't available yet. So speaking of the weapons, let's see if we're seeing any difference in terms of... Because we've been pretty much even, you know, kind of 50-50 on the casualties uh, that we've inflicted versus received so far in the war. Um, so we're not the Army of the Potomac. We are the Army of Northern Virginia. So thus far, we've inflicted 453 ca casualties at a cost of just 77. That, my friends, is exactly what we want to see moving forward. Let's hope that continues. Of course, we're going to see more casualties over here, but this is not my army. In other words, we don't really care that much, although I guess we should in terms of long-term thinking. All right, and again, we've got two units firing on one, which is exactly what we want, plus artillery support, which is huge. For the first time, I've got a decent amount of artillery in my army, and we've pretty much hurled back everything the enemy has thrown at us. Overall casualties, about two to one. Looks like things are going to calm down, at least for the moment. So looking at the map now, we are into around noon uh, on April 4th. Uh, there is some fighting going on over here on the right. There's also another Confederate force that has arrived, and it looks like they're marching right to my position. They may kind of supersede me and go all Leroy Jenkins and attack the Union force, which is fine if they do. I'm not going to sacrifice my army that way. I want to be more cautious and judicial with my forces. And it looks like Magruder has driven off the force over here, but we're not doing enough for victory, even though right now 475 Confederate casualties, 1,300 for the Union. We outnumber him almost 2 to 1 on the battlefield. We're getting low on shells, though, because our artillery's been firing quite a bit, even while we haven't really been engaging the enemy. So let's go ahead and send Magruder's army, which we control, over here to, to deal with whatever Union force is still up here. It looks like it's mostly just artillery at this point. All right, we have won the battle. It's a minor victory. The Union has withdrawn better than two to one casualties uh, inflicted. We do have a pretty significant force, so we shouldn't be surprised. But uh, we're going to come out of here with about a thousand prestige, which is good because, again, that should be enough for us to upgrade the rest of our units. And once all of our units are upgraded, then we can start thinking about recruiting additional units. Of course, the long-term goal here is, of course, to be able to grow to more than just a division command. Uh, but that'll probably mean spending prestige to get promoted to a bigger force. And I'd rather kind of just build my army that I currently have. 
So now my entire army has Lauren's rifles. We have 10,500 men. We've still got 327 prestige with more coming from the latest party we threw. So the next thing I want to do is I want to actually add a second uh, cavalry unit. So we'll have two. We can kind of put them on our flanks or send them out as scouts. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and recruit auto generate. That means whatever is the quickest to get to the front lines is what we will get. So it's going to be the second Maryland cavalry, 23 days to arrive. We get a lot of Maryland units because we are just auto generating and trying to go with whatever's closest. And since we're operating near Maryland, we're getting a lot of Maryland troops uh, in our force. So, uh, so there's that. Uh, probably need to think about whether or not any of our units or commanders need promoted. Uh, I'm a brigade, a brigadier general myself, and uh, kind of curious to see what it would take for me to get to uh, major general level. Uh, another 2,100 prestige to get there, but that'll go down the longer I'm in command of a division, the less prestige I'll need to make that promotion. Uh, in the meantime, we could also spend money on some items and weapons which will give us some different bonuses. Uh, I don't know if I want to spend 300 on a cavalry sword. Although that one's only available at Division Command, so it might be pretty valuable. Let's go ahead and get it. The Dufilo Pelican Sword. I have no idea what it's going to offer me as far as bonuses go. It doesn't really say. It's a motivator of staff officers, so maybe it gives bonus to them. So I was just involved in a battle that I auto-resolved because we had a big advantage in numbers, and we managed to win, and I came out of it with 1,400 prestige. It's April 11th, and uh, we've got 10,500 men. We've got 16 days for the second Maryland to arrive. I wish there were some way that I could get my unit made into a bigger one. I don't think there is a way to do that. Uh, Yeah, there's just not a way. Uh, upgrade division to core. Only the commanding general can execute that operation. So, unfortunately, I don't have the option to do that. I would have to um, get get promoted to a different unit that actually is a core and then try to acquire my previous unit. That would be the only way that I could do it. And I don't really see any independent core that are available for that. We actually, oh, there's the Army of the Peninsula. It would require, oh, they're engaged in a battle, so I can't even really see what it would cost to get them. Because uh, this one, the Army of Shenandoah, is so much bigger. That one would cost 9600 Obviously, we don't have that. So two things have happened. Our party was a success, so we're up to 1600 prestige now. We also have our second perk available. My first perk, I chose Ambulance Corps, which is typically the first perk I choose. Uh, because it reduces the mortality rate of wounded and it speeds or it uh, takes away from the reduction in speed due to wounded soldiers. Uh, so anytime you have wounded soldiers, that gets leveled up. So it's a really easy perk to level up and it's also very helpful because you lose less men killed in battle. Uh, I like the idea of flying column because we can carry more supplies with us which I think would be helpful, and movement supplies or movement speed is increased. So we're going to get Flying Column uh, for our second perk. And how is that up? Uh, that is leveled up by marching, which we will definitely do some marching. Um, in the meantime, I'm kind of thinking about recruiting another division or another brigade, but we're already... And it looks like it will let me... Oh, um... Early armies may only have division levels. Military Act 2 allows raising grand armies with independent corps. I don't know if we have that yet. Let's see where the project or the uh, where the policies are. So we do have military too. So those are actually things that can already be created. Independent corps within armies. Which obviously we don't command an army yet. Army of the Peninsula is still engaged in battle. I've decided I haven't been given orders, but we're going to move on this second division. This Union division's got 10,000 men, uh, so it's a pretty equal number to what we have, and we might get the help from Porterfield's division uh, if we make the move, because they might. I think they're close enough to help out. Then again, the Union might have units 
close enough too, but they're all already engaged. Where? Whoa, where, where? Whoa, no, that's not where I said to go. I said to go up there. Did we just retreat for some reason? Yeah, we withdrew in the face of the Army of Northern Virginia. That's not his name too, is it? That's the Department of Pennsylvania. Really not sure what's happening here. So I'm falling back uh, because we're dealing with a supply issue. Uh, we've got poor condition, unhappy men, low ammunition, low food. So I'm moving back to the closest supply depot, which is here. And it actually had orders to not even resupply. So I've changed the storage target, which it does allow me to do, uh, to make it green, which is full automatic. Looks like we did win a victory at Alexandria. And there are some new weapons. Uh, oh, these are more Lawrence's. We don't need those. We already have plenty of those. Uh, Army of the Peninsula would cost 2,500 prestige to get, which would be a core level command. So we're actually getting close to that. Uh, I'm also curious to see. We actually have the prestige to get promotion to Major General, but I don't want to blow all my prestige on a promotion just yet. So it looks like uh, a couple of our units have defeated some enemy divisions just northeast of Winchester, and Winchester is owned by the enemy at the moment. So we're going to make our move toward the enemy that is apparently camping out there. All right, people have noticed your personality changing recently. Sometimes you seem to advance your own agenda instead of that of your superior officers in the government. Some think your main goal is to advance your career and personal well-being. That, that may be true, because I have been just kind of moving without orders at, at times. But I'm trying to help the cause here. Uh, I've been ordered to move where? Oh, to Warrington. Yeah, let me uh, go help capture Winchester first, and then I'll do that. Uh, I did get a nice amount of money. Uh, let's go ahead in here. I spent some prestige to gain money, and now we're going to spend money to gain prestige. Uh, we're also going to spend prestige to gain money again. So oh, I can only do one at a time. So, All right, that's fine. Uh, in the meantime, though, I've got a decent amount of money. Let's do something with it. Uh, what else can we buy? Pack of cigars. Just looking to see uh, Bible. Yeah, glass flask. Decreasing hostilities around me. That might not be bad. Binoculars help decision making and increase, decrease order delays. Let's do that. So now that we've captured Winchester, we need to move back to. Oh, geez. I just gave the orders to go to the place you told me to go to before. And now I've got new orders. So I, I first want to go grab that supply depot, though, and recapture it for our side. Once I do that, then we'll move up toward the enemy, which seems to outnumber me there. Uh, looks like we're going to get into some really pretty even combat but we're 54 hours away so hopefully the battle's not over when we get there battle of leesburg we have roughly equal numbers the confederates we are slightly outnumbered by about 3500 men uh, i'm moving my army into position here it looks like johnston's moving his army of the shenandoah to my left uh, we're roughly equal in size i have about 11,000 men he's got about 9,000 and uh we'll I'm going to try to wait until he engages on the left to make my move here. Then again, I might need to go first just because he's got to cross a bridge. But uh, artillery is opening up. I'm still waiting for the last of my units to get in a position. He's already crossing, so I guess we're going to have to make our move. Remember, all of our units now have Lauren's rifles, so that's good news. Um, I'd like to get this brigade over here into the woods. On the left, who's next to them? That would be Manning's Brigade, and we're going to move them into position right here on the center. Looks like the Army of the Shenandoah has plans to move into position on my left, so that's good. So I'll put these two brigades here on the in the woods. Uh, I think we'll go ahead then and move Whitfield's Brigade up here. And then that leaves Humphrey's Brigade, and we'll move them as well. 
So he's not going to wait for me to get my units into position. He's moving on me. And I do have a little bit of overlap. It looks like uh, Jeb Stewart's brigade's moving in from the Army of the Shenandoah toward me. Let's get Whitfield over here so he's a little more central to his brigade. Yeah, I'm already there, dude. And I got instant prestige for already being in the position that I was ordered to go to. So what we've got to do now is we've got to... 7 Virginia Cavalry. That's uh, not one of my units. I don't like that this guy's getting up and getting the defensive position at the creek, but not a lot I can do about that. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with how things are going. But his whole force is moving toward me, which means they're moving away from the enemy. Although, oh, it looks like they're sneaking in behind the army of the Shenandoah, so... This is going to be a mess of a battle. Numbers are pretty even, though. Enemies estimated to have around 23,000 men, which is roughly what we have. So if we can get a couple early victories, drive off a few units early on, I think we'll be in good shape. Oh, that's not one of my units. That's a bit of the problem here is that we've got overlapping units, so... Some units that I think are mine aren't. Alright, we drove off the advance, but there's a massive Union force headed our way. I've got my new 2nd Maryland Cavalry heading out on my flank here. Let's try to straighten out the line a little bit. Ah, didn't mean to do that. Let's zoom in. The artillery is going to have a hard time firing from out here, so I'm going to move them out to a clear spot a little ways from the rest of the division or the brigade. Oh boy. Oh, that's the that's the unit. That, no, wait, that is my 4th Maryland battery moving forward into a position where they're going to get slaughtered. Pull back, dude, please. I'm trying to get everybody sorted here as best I can. Meanwhile, there goes Jeb Stewart charging in, and we've got a big problem because we've got regiments sneaking in behind us. I'm going to send the 2nd South Carolina Cav over there to deal with that. I'm also going to send the 35th Western Virginia cover our rear a little bit because we've got to deal with this major threat in front of us. Wish I could send more, but I really don't think I can. Wow, we got Confederate and Union units all mixed up together near the bridge here. Hopefully they're going to deal with them. They're going to be overwhelmed over there, though. I think we're going to have a problem on our hands just because of the other Union force that's apparently unchecked. I'm trying to build up a line here, but the AI went all crazy on me with the units I don't control. And in the meantime, let's move my division commander back a little bit. Let's send skirmishers out. from all of our brigades. All right, second South Carolina dismount. Let's try to hold them off as best we can. Nothing else will come out of here with a decent amount of prestige. I am a little worried about how these guys are going to hold up. Looks like we're getting some help, though.
Morale looks good for our side, but that can quickly change. Casualties about the same on each side. I'm waiting for this force to advance. Need to organize these guys a little bit. All right, I think we're gonna be able to take care of these units that tried to threaten my rear. So far, so good. Cav's gonna actually level up here pretty soon at this rate. We've got some help coming in on our right over there. Still worried about Sam Cooper not getting his units where I want them to be, but looks like they're slowly moving into position. All right, we drove off both of those units. Excellent. I'm going to keep these guys here, though, because I don't know what else might be out there. Looks like the Union's starting to advance. We still have... Joe Johnston's men out there kind of doing their own thing which I don't think is helping the cause very much but it does shield my army a little bit it doesn't appear like there's a lot more going on back here so I might go ahead and bring the 35th Western Virginia back up we'll leave the South Carolina cab back there our skirmishers are engaging in the woods on the right like they may fall back before too long. In fact, I might go ahead and pull them back so we can get the, the full force to open up since he's only got a few units out in front. Overall looking good. Two to one casualties again so far for our side. As long as the army of the Shenandoah can hold what's going on up here, I think we'll be all right. We're just going to sit tight, kind of watch the overall strategic situation. Drove back the first few, now we've got some more coming. There's Isaac Avery, who commanded a brigade at Gettysburg. Attacked East Cemetery Hill, if I remember right. So far, I'm feeling good. I like when we get to sit back, hold a solid line, and let the enemy come to us. Especially when we've got good artillery support, like we do here with these 24-pounder howitzers. they are just going to pour murderous fire into the 15th Pennsylvania's flank. That's exactly what we want. Okay, now he's going to start advancing over here on our left. So these skirmishers, Hinman, the skirmishers are low on ammo. We should pull them in. Now we can open up on the second mass cab as they cross. Again, we've got nice fire that we can pour on them from multiple sides. shred them. As long as uh, Joe Johnston keeps these guys busy up here, we're looking good. Looking real good. Let's take a look at the numbers here for a minute. Combat report. Army of Northern Virginia, we've inflicted 1,158 casualties, a little more than half of the total. Uh, and then in terms of casualties taken, we've only taken 197 casualties compared to 786 taken by Joe Johnston's men. So 2% casualties for us. 197 taken, 1,158. So we're inflicting something like 6 to 1 casualties right now. That is a beautiful thing. 
So I think we can go ahead and advance this forward a little bit. We're going to come out of here with a good 3,000 prestige, I think. Enough at the very least to get a promotion. I don't know if it'll be enough to take a new command. I'd rather have the new command than the promotion. But I'd rather keep this division that I've built up. I've recruited most of these units myself. I hate to lose them. So it might take me a little bit of time to gain enough prestige to get a core level command and then also transfer this division to my new command. Because it's a big division. Ah, I think Johnston's men are losing it. Hmm. Federal morale has gone back up. We're holding the line here. All right, he's attacking us again over on the right flank. Let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. It's almost nightfall, though. And it's going to end our aspirations of holding the line against the enemy because there's going to be redeployment going on. But he is, he is trying to attack our flank, our right flank, and... Put a hurting on us there, but I think we've got enough firepower to hold. We're not taking a lot of casualties at all. He's trying to get around my right, though. Yeah, see what he's doing? He's forcing the 2nd Maryland into a position where they might break. Because he got around my flank. Ah, oh, there they go. Well, now we're kind of hoping for Nightfall to hit. Because it's going to save my army as he tries to roll up my flank. There we go. Alright, we're re-engaging. Right on the same line we were before, but I was able to kind of fix the line a little bit. I've got a bunch of my artillery in the center here protected by the cavalry, which was a common practice. That was something that cavalry was often used for, was to protect batteries. This is a big bunch of Joe Johnston's men that, for whatever reason, are all bunched up in the front of my line that I've got dug in behind this creek here. So I think we're in good shape. I like where we're at. I like our chances of really putting a hurt on this Union Brigade division, I think, that's trying to attack me here really rack up the prestige now from the, the casualties we're going to inflict right there. Thankfully we're able to drive off a few of them before he can stretch out his line and try to get around my flank again. If that starts to happen again, I'll just pull the second Delaware back uh, to kind of curl them around a little bit and cover my flank, but I think, I think that won't be necessary. Oh boy, looks like our, our left is completely uncovered over here. Let's pull the 2nd South Carolina over to help with that. I'm already where you ordered me to go, Joe Johnston. So thanks for the extra prestige for just staying where I already am. I'm really worried about this, though. Instead of Johnston all bunched up in front of my line, it would be nice if he'd pull over here to help out, but I can see now that I'm going to have to do that. So we're going to start pulling units over that way to protect our left, and then I'm advancing on the right try and smash through him and then that way maybe we can bring our whole line around if we need to or we can win a victory before that's even necessary that would be ideal honestly if we can destroy his left this stuff over here won't matter so let's start advancing forward Go 
ahead and hit the uh, hit the guns here. We're just going to overwhelm that unit. He's going to start pulling everybody back now. I've got a strong enough force in place over here that I think we can slow him down while we deal with this. Let's go ahead and send Manning forward. We're just going to keep driving. Try to turn this into a victory before any threat to my left even materializes. Getting some real nice prestige in the process. There we go. Let's go, boys. Nice. Love it. Got ourselves a Yankee skedaddle. Ah, now I'm getting a little aggressive. I got to be careful here. I don't want to get stupid. Two of my units broke because I got a little too aggressive. I am up to 3,600 prestige, but again, we're not doing enough to secure a victory for the for the battle, which is what I'm concerned about at this point. Taking a look at the situation, uh, we've inflicted 3,000 casualties at a loss of 1,300 men. So still better than two to one. Um, Joe Johnson's got 6,666 men currently. Uh, he's lost 24%. He's lost more than half his guns. We haven't lost a gun. We've lost 12% of our army. That's getting into the range that's more than I'm really comfortable with, so I don't want to get too crazy here. So right now what I'm doing is I'm sending detachments to capture some of these guns. Uh, I want to see if that actually registers. On Yeah, now we were showing four guns captured, whereas we had zero before. So uh, we're doing that. We're kind of consolidating our position. I'm going to go ahead and start moving up now to the new line. Joe Johnston went crazy and kind of advanced into the enemy again, which once again doesn't appear to have worked out. Now we're in a situation where the battle is showing as a defeat, even though we've inflicted almost 25% casualties on the enemy at the moment. We're going to sit tight right at the edge of these woods and let the enemy come to us. All right, they withdrew at the end of the second day's battle. 7,000 men inflicted on the Union force of 24,000. It's a major Confederate victory. We gained 2,000 prestige, 1,500 for casualties inflicted, 300 for orders obeyed, and 175 for routing a unit. So we're coming out of here with almost 4,000 prestige. This should get us a core level command, and we'll see what else we can do with it. So currently it'll take 1,500 prestige to get a promotion to Major General. That would leave me with about 2,400. Um, Army of the Potomac is obviously way too big. It would take 13,000 prestige to take that one over. I just need something with a core level command that will allow me to have divisions under me. There are only a couple of them out there, though. And that's the problem. Magruder is the best bet that we've got, and we can get that for 2,700, which means I would not quite have enough for promotion unless having a higher command means the promotion would cost less so uh, we will lose our staff corps uh, we're going to take over the army of the peninsula i really hate the name i should have renamed the army of northern virginia before i took over the new army and then renamed this one we'll eventually come up with a better name i, I don't like army of the peninsula moving forward but uh, that's what we've got uh, so here's the question now. We've only got 12,000 men. Uh, number one, does it cost the same for a promotion? It does. It's still 1,500 for a major general command. I'm hoping, though, that core level means that we'll more rapidly move to a place where we can get that. The other thing I want to do then is I want to see if it's possible to transfer units like, say, the... Actually, if we, we were able to transfer the army, um, where'd the army of the northern army of Northern Virginia go? That's weird. 
They didn't go with me, did they? No. Really strange. Okay, so I see what happened. Uh, Sears is now in command of my former division, which has been absorbed into the Army of the Potomac under Millage Bonham, who now is a four-star general. Um, so what, what I would love to do is be able to transfer them, uh, and I want to see what it would take to be able to do that, if it's even an option that it would let me do that, or if I'm going to have to be the overall commander in order to be able to do that before I even start reorganizing my army. So uh, I really would like to get that division back. So Sears' division, will it let me transfer them to me? It appears no. Can I at least grab brigades? Will it even let me do that? No. There's got to be a way to do it. I'm just not sure what it, what it is. Okay, so at least for now, my reorganization is that I'm going to put my two cavalry units attached directly to core or Army headquarters. Uh, we're going to attach our artillery directly to our division headquarters. And then that gives us a total of five infantry brigades, each with three regiments. Now, the good news is that we appear to not have any mixed muskets. We do have some Springfield muskets, but those are still better than mixed muskets. I hate all the prestige I spent to upgrade the weapons of a unit I no longer control. So that's why I'm hopeful there's going to be some way that I can transfer them uh, into my command. I, there's got to be some way to do that. I just don't know what it is at the moment. So if you know of a way to do it, let me know in the comment section below. In the meantime, I'll research it and find out if there is a way or if I just have to be the Army overall commander in order to be able to do that. Uh, in the meantime, we now command 12,000 men, which is a core level, which allows me to add new divisions. So now I'll have multiple divisions under my command. A lot more potential for growth. It's still only May of 62. We're super close to a promotion to Major General. And I could conceivably, if I fight a few more battles here, see myself in command of 20,000, 30,000 men by the end of 1862, which would be really nice going into the heart of this war. And there's definitely a path forward here for me to get major operational command in Virginia and really be able to affect this war. So we'll see what happens. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. And we'll be back again, hopefully much sooner than we have been with another episode. Christmas coming up, but I'm not traveling again for about six weeks. So I've got some time to stay home and make some videos. Thanks for watching.